Good morning, folks. A couple quick items for you to check out. First, excellent footage of Cena Boom, the disaster underway. These videos from the Telegraph are outstanding. You can even catch that rare volcanic lightning we've looked for in the past. Schedule for Electric Universe Conference is up. They've got me speaking Saturday afternoon, but full show goes from Thursday to Monday, all going down in Albuquerque, New Mexico in late March, about two months away. Now for what made my day. Folks, Star water is proven. The ideas we've shared about solar wind electrochemical combination with oxygen to form water and hydroxyls is now fully vetted. The authors go on to say that this is a ubiquitous process in our solar system. The observers already know it goes way beyond that. Three chapters down with the finale of Star water just days away at the start of February. Folks, this isn't just about where you can find water. It's about life. And in the finale, we're going to break down Harvard's latest charge forward in the Drake equation and then show why they stopped way, way too short. And now I've got a paper describing the mechanism. Unreal how lucky that is. Starwater, found at suspiciousobservers.org. Feeling good? Got the gloves on for this one. Global State of the Climate Report is out. It was a bit warmer of a year in general. They didn't show the polar regions because they'd need to show more blue. But anyway, the one-sided graphics and news articles can't stop you from going and seeing the extremes of both warm and cold, dry and wet, storms and lack thereof all over the globe. Global warming should be called climate extremes. It's very real. But we continue to get one-sided articles and the like. There are a couple absolutely pathetic lying graphics in here that are going out all over the net. Remember climate number one. Why does our government only show data back to here? They did it with CO2 as well because putting on more data hurts their cause. These scientists know full well the temperature curve was up a few decades earlier, then down and up and down. The Climate Series, with a lie in the middle, can be watched on YouTube and on the website. Dude, if you're just going to sit there in the North Pacific, I'm going to start ignoring you. Besides, the other side of the country is buried in white powder, if they're lucky. For some, it's thicker wet clumps or ice. Digging out today. Kicking to Europe, where you can see a much altered pressure situation with a minimal convergence line across the land today. Australia and New Zealand. Top story is the rain resultant to that low still stuck in Western Australia. The low heading to New Zealand weakened slightly, but be on alert for your local forecasts. Remember we said there was a chance that the limb eruption from yesterday could actually give a glancing blow to Earth because of how wide it ejected? Well, it turns out NOAA's updated their endless spiral hours later, and they agree completely, indeed purporting an encroaching plasma cloud. There was another eruption on the disk yesterday, but per the evening news analysis, this one's heading mostly south. Looking at the sensitive metrics, boy, there must be a clear solar wind signature for this one, and indeed there is. Yesterday, the orange density dropped out and the speed ramped in yellow. This is definitively the coronal hole stream. We don't have geomagnetic instability yet, and it would come with a bit more density, so watch for that. Flaring is pitiful. The sunspots facing Earth are a joke. Gamma class up north, but with junior varsity-sized umbras. We do have some bigger ones on the southeastern limb, but the magnetic mixing? Just not there like we'd need to see bigger flaring. Coronal fields? Can't figure out which part of the sun to cover at the moment, and I have no idea if there will be open or closed today. But I really don't care. I'll be riding that star water cloud all day. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.